Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video we will talk about aortic regurgitation, also known as aortic insufficiency. Aortic regurgitation, also known as incompetent aortic valve, occurs when the aortic valve fails to close properly, allowing blood to flow back from the aorta into the left ventricle. Basically, when the aortic valve should be closed, it is not completely closed. The most common cause of aortic regurgitation is valve degeneration. The gradual wear and tear on the aortic valve over time can lead to inadequate closure and subsequent regurgitation. Another common cause is rheumatic fever. This occurs in the setting of unmanaged streptococcal infections that result in scarring and deformity of the heart valves, including the aortic valve. Another cause is a congenital bicuspid aortic valve. Usually, the aortic valve has three leaflets, but in some patients, the aortic valve only has two leaflets. This anomaly can become prone to regurgitation over time. Also, aortic root dilatation can lead to aortic regurgitation. Aortic root dilatation is the enlargement of the aortic root, which causes stretching of the aortic valve leaflets and can prevent proper closure. Connective tissue disorders like Marfan syndrome and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome are often affecting the structural integrity of the aortic valve and contribute to aortic regurgitation. Other causes are infective endocarditis and aortic dissection. How can we detect aortic regurgitation by auscultation? Aortic regurgitation is often characterized by an early diastolic soft murmur that we can hear during auscultating the patient's chest. To listen to the aortic valve, we place our stethoscope on the second intercostal space on the left side of the patient's chest, just next to the sternum. In some cases, an additional murmur known as the Austin Flint murmur, may be heard at the apex of the heart. This murmur is resembling a diastolic rumbling sound. This occurs due to the retrograde flow of blood over the mitral valve, causing vibration. Other detectable signs of aortic regurgitation include a palpable thrill in the aortic area upon examination. A collapsing pulse, also referred to as water hammer pulse, and a wide pulse pressure. The collapsing pulse is notable for its forceful appearance and rapid disappearance, which can be felt in the radial artery on the patient's wrist, when the patient's arm is elevated above their head. This phenomenon results from the forceful ejection of blood from the left ventricle, followed by immediate backflow through the incompetent aortic valve. Another important tool for diagnosing aortic regurgitation is the echocardiography, where we basically make an ultrasound of the heart. Signs of aortic regurgitation include left ventricular enlargement. The left ventricle is the heart chamber that pumps blood to the body. Aortic regurgitation can cause the left ventricle to enlarge over time as it has to work harder to pump blood out of the heart. Another sign is left ventricular hypotrophy. The left ventricle can also become thicker than normal in patients with aortic regurgitation. This is also due to the heart having to work harder to pump blood out of the heart. Another important indicator 
is the regurgitin jet. The regurgitin jet is the stream of blood that flows back from the aorta into the left ventricle during diastole, so the time when the heart relaxes. The size and location of the regurgitin jet can help to determine the severity of the aortic regurgitation. Aortic regurgitation can also lead to pulmonary artery hypertension. Aortic regurgitation can cause the pressure in the pulmonary artery to increase. This is because the right ventricle has to work harder to pump blood through the lungs. Important to note is that echocardiographic findings are not always specific for aortic regurgitation. Other conditions, such as mitral regurgitation, can also cause some of the same findings. However, echocardiographic findings can be helpful in diagnosing and assessing the severity of aortic regurgitation. What are symptoms of aortic regurgitation? Symptoms of aortic regurgitation are often mild or moderate for an extended period and may remain asymptomatic. Severe cases can lead to gradually worsening heart failure symptoms and symptomatic angina pectoris without significant coronary artery changes. Those symptoms may include chest pain and it is a common symptom of aortic regurgitation. The pain is usually felt in the center of the chest and can be sharp or dull. It can be worse with exertion or when lying down. Shortness of breath is another common symptom of aortic regurgitation. It is caused by the heart having to work harder to pump blood out of the body. Shortness of breath can be worse with exertion or when lying down. Palpitations are a feeling of the heart racing or fluttering. Palpitations can also be worth, worse with exertion or when lying down. Fatigue is a feeling of tiredness or lack of energy. Lightheadedness is a feeling of dizziness or fainting. Lightheadedness can be worse with exertion or when lying down as well. Syncope is a sudden loss of consciousness. Syncope can be a serious symptom of aortic regurgitation and should be evaluated by a doctor. How can we grade aortic regurgitation? Mild aortic regurgitation is the least severe form of aortic regurgitation. It is usually asymptomatic, meaning that it does not cause any symptoms. Mild aortic regurgitation may be detected during a routine physical examination or during an echocardiogram. Moderate aortic regurgitation is a more severe form of aortic regurgitation. It can cause symptoms such as shortness of breath, fatigue and palpitations. Moderate aortic regurgitation may also cause the heart to enlarge and the blood pressure to rise. Severe aortic regurgitation is the most severe form of aortic regurgitation. It can cause symptoms such as shortness of breath, fatigue and palpitations. Severe aortic regurgitation can also lead to heart failure and death. The grading of aortic regurgitation is based on the amount of blood that regurgitates back into the left ventricle during diastole, so the time when the heart relaxes. Hemodynamically significant aortic insuffic insufficiency is characterized by a high difference between systolic and diastolic blood pressure, with a difference typically over 80 mm mercury. How can we treat aortic regurgitation? Treatment options include pharmacological or surgical approaches. Peripheral arterial and venous vasodilators 
such as ACE inhibitors and diuretics, are commonly used, although medications alone might not provide sufficient relief. In case of severe aortic regurgitation, urgent aortic valve replacement is recommended, regardless of the underlying cause. This condition is typically severe and associated with a poor prognosis due to the lack of left ventricular adaptation, normal left ventricular dimensions, and a markedly elevated left ventricular end diastolic pressure. Unlike some conditions, slowing the heart rate can exacerbate regurgitation as it prolongs the duration of retrograde flow. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope it was helpful. Hopefully see you again in the next video.